What's up everyone, Terracoic here, and I'm back with another Pokemon Challenge video. And before I get into going over this challenge, I want to say that this week was supposed to be a Pokemon Platinum Challenge, but I had a lot of technical difficulties and it just wasn't going to work out, so I'm going to hold it off for a while. But it's all good because now I'm seeing if I can beat Pokemon Fire Red with only one Porygon. Porygon's speed and attack aren't that good, but his defenses and special attack are pretty good, so I'm definitely going to be relying more on special attack. Taking a look at his moveset, he learns Psybeam at level 12, which will be a must-have before Brock. He also gets the great move Tri-Attack at level 36, which is also a stab attack. And at level 48, he gets Zap Cannon. So, sure, his moveset isn't very diverse, but the moves he gets are pretty powerful. However, he can learn a bunch of TMs. I mean, just look at all these powerful TMs like Toxic, Blizzard, Hyper Beam, Solar Beam, Thunder, Shadow Ball, Psychic. So many great TMs he can learn. And to be honest, by the end of the game, his moveset might just be all TMs. On to the rules for this challenge. I'm only able to use Porygon in battle. I'll have to catch other Pokemon for HM use only, but they will not be allowed in combat. I'm not allowed to use any items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of battle are allowed. And finally, I will not be using any glitches or exploits. You already know to start, I'm calling myself TQ because Terraquake does not fit in the spaces given. I replaced Bulbasaur with Porygon, and to be honest, it didn't really matter which Pokemon I replaced because none of them have an advantage over me, and it is, of course, the return of my man subscribe. First rival battle actually went pretty well because Tackle is a stab attack for me compared to Gary's weak scratch on his Charmander. So yeah, I also have these two other moves, Conversion and Conversion 2. I probably won't be using them too much, but anyways, I just tackled my way to victory because like I said, it was stab, so it was dealing out a lot of good damage despite our bad attack stat. After training up a bit more, I knew I was ready to go take on our rival west of Viridian City. And good thing I didn't have to worry about his Pidgey Sand Attack because my Trace ability traces his Keen Eye. So his Pidgey went down with three tackles, not too hard. However, his Charmander was able to dish out some damage because he used Growl and now we're basically hitting each other for the same amount of damage. Not to mention I also missed a tackle so he got me all the way down to 9 health before I just barely took him out. Brock time. And just like my Voltorb challenge, this battle is very easy because now I have Psybeam on my side and both his Geodude and Onyx went down with two Psybeams because our special attack is just too good I and mean, we nearly one shot his Geodude. And his Onyx, the best he could really do was just use Bind against me and that wasn't doing hardly anything. So yeah, easy win against Brock and an easy first gym battle. Once again, I'm taking on my rival here at the Nugget Bridge and this is mainly just me using Psybeam. First up was his Pidgeotto, and really, I don't think his Pidgeotto or Pidgeot is going to be a problem throughout this challenge because I can always trace his Keen Eye. So I take him out with two side beams. Same with Rattata, I take him out with two side beams. His Charmander is able to hit me with a weak Ember, I guess that's just because our defenses are so good. And yes, take him down with two side beams. And then his Abra, I accidentally used a side beam on it because I was just pressing A too hard. I was going all in, but yeah, then I switched over to Tackle to finish him off beating our rival for the third time already. Time to take on Misty, and really this battle should not have been as hard as it was, but anyways, first up was her Staryu, and I nearly one-shot it with one Psybeam, but the good thing is I did get her to waste her Super Potion, so that was nice, and then I just took it down with two tackles, so I got a weak Water Pulse off, but then up next was her Starmie, and I just got incredibly unlucky. I got confused three different times, by her water pulse and that was just so dumb and Psybeam didn't do as much damage as I wanted to so I had to resort to tackle but luckily I had recover at this point so I could heal myself quite a lot actually more than I thought but yeah I mean as you can see here second time being confused and then I missed a tackle just so many dumb things happened in this battle luckily I had recover or I would have had to restart this battle but yeah, we eventually do win after finally getting through many confusions. It was just so dumb. Like, even right here at the end, get confused for a third time. I just don't understand the luck. But all that matters is that we got our second gym badge. Rival time on the SSN, and he was a complete pushover. I basically just tackled and sidebeamed all the way through his team. I nearly one-shot his Pidgeotto. It literally hung on with probably one HP, but we took it out with a tackle. Next up was his Raticate, but I went right back to Psybeam, taking it down in one shot, 
and then his Kadabra came up, and I actually took it down with just one tackle. Now, I know he has awful physical defenses, but still, I mean, my physical attack isn't that good, but we were able to take it down, and then Charmeleon comes in, and all he can do is just get off a weak Ember, and then we finish it off with another Psybeam, defeating Gary once again. Time for Lieutenant Surge, and his first two Pokemon were very easy. His Voltorb and Pikachu both went down with just one Psybeam. I also kind of thought it was funny that his Pikachu was only level 18 on that level than Misty Starmie. I didn't even realize that until just now when I'm playing through this challenge, but then out came his Raichu, which outspeeds me and paralyzed me first, and then he went for a double team. I was like, uh oh, please don't start. We get him down to low health, but he heals with a super potion. And then I guess, you know, we didn't miss w with him using double team. But we did get fully paralyzed two times in a row, so I guess that sort of evens it out. But in the end, we win, and I also taught subscribe Shockwave after this battle, just for some extra type coverage. I've always found it annoying in these games, so you have to catch 10 different species of Pokemon just to get the HM for Flash, but I did end up doing it just to help me get through the Rock Tunnel. And yeah, this might seem like a very random clip, but sometimes it's good to get a break from the action. Rival time in the Lost Tower now, and this battle was pretty easy. The first two Pokemon were super easy to take out now that I have Shockwave, and it's also nice that I always trace this Pidgeotto's keen eye ability so I can't get my accuracy lowered, and it just makes that battle much easier. And his Gyarados, luckily I have Shockwave because I feel like that could have been tough to take out if I didn't have it. Next up was his Execute, which surprisingly lived my first try attack and then put me to sleep. But luckily, two turns later, we woke up and I killed it with another tri attack. Then his second to last Pokemon was Kadabra, and that did go down with one tri attack. His Charmeleon, another Pokemon that was able to live a tri attack, but yeah, tri attack still a pretty powerful move to have on Porygon, and it gets the job done pretty easily. Charmeleon just wastes his turn using Smokescreen, and we defeat our rival. Speaking of easy battles, Giovanni time, and his first two Pokemon were super easy to take down because I am over 20 levels higher than them. So yeah, Onyx goes down with one side beam, Rhyhorn goes down with one side beam. Then his Kangaskhan is able to take a tri attack, but then he used a bite, which did a whopping six hit points. I'm just like, man, come on, Giovanni. And I finished him off with another tri attack, defeating Giovanni for the first time. While I was in Celadon City, I decided to take on Erika, and this was probably the easiest gym battle so far, as all three of her Pokemon went down with one hit. Since her victory bell is part poison, Psybeam easily takes it down. Tangela, I'm surprised, couldn't even take a tri attack. I know it has decent defenses, but oh well, I'm not complaining. And then last up, her Vile Bloom, of course, that's also part poison, goes down with one Psybeam. Extremely easy battle. Right after Erika, I headed down south to Fuchsia City to take on Koga. And this was a really easy battle. I had Psybeam. What I probably should have done is go to, go on to Saffron and get the TM for Psychic, but I didn't really think of it at the time. And yeah, his only Pokemon that was able to take a Psybeam was his Muck, but it used Minimize and then he healed it up. Luckily, we didn't miss it all, so we were able to take it down with two more Psybeams. And then he had a second Coughing come out. That thing went down with one Psybeam. And his Weezing also went down with one Psybeam. And at this point, we're in the 60s right now. I think that's just... A little over leveled, I guess, but hey, it's making this challenge that much easier. Rival time at the Sylph Co. And this was probably the first hard battle, I guess, that I had with Gary. And you'll also be able to tell that I turned off battle animations. I always forget to do that until I'm like halfway through a challenge, but yeah, battle animations are off just to speed up the process a bit. But like always, his Pidgeot and Gyarados go down with one shockwave. His Charizard lives with the tiniest of their health, burns me with a flamethrower, and then we take it down. Next up is his Execute, which I don't know why, it must be something. He's just able to take my tri attack so well. And I'm very low on health, including the burn, but luckily Recovered heals up a ton of HP. And so I get back to, you know, comfortable health going into his final Pokemon, Alakazam, which wasn't too hard. I use a Recover just to be safe. He starts going with Calm Minds, which scares me a bit. But then I tri attack and burn him, which is nice. And I'm able to finish him off with a one shockwave, defeating Gary in a surprisingly close match. Giovanni, on the other hand, was very easy. First up was his Nidorino, and that goes down with one Psychic. I'm so glad I have Psychic now, it's just a much better move than Psybeam. Next up was his Nidoqueen, and that thing also goes down with one Psychic. And yeah, I mean, they're both poison types, what do you expect? And then afterwards, his King is gone. I go with Tri Attack, but it hits me with Fake Out. Luckily, it's just a very weak move, and then he wastes his turn using Tail Whip, so I take him down with another 
try attack, and then last up is Rhyhorn, I go right back to Psychic, beating Giovanni and taking down Team Rocket. Just like Erika and Koga, Sabrina was a very easy gym battle, and I think I said the same thing in my Voltorb challenge, but I don't know, she's just never really giving me trouble. Her first cadaver goes down with one try attack, and I get up to level 69, nice. Next up is Mr. Mime, take him down with one tri attack. Venomoth also can't take a tri attack. And last up, her Alakazam. I wasn't too worried about it, man. It goes down with a crit tri attack. And we defeat Sabrina very easily. After that, I headed right over to Cinnabar Island to take on Blaine. And at this point, I'm in the low 70s. And man, it's just a pretty easy battle. Intimidate, not really gonna do anything. I still take out his Growlithe in one hit. Next up is Ponyta, also goes down with one tri attack. Rapidash comes out, and yeah, I was basically just spamming tri attack. I was able to freeze his Rapidash because somehow fire types can get frozen. I don't really know how. The Psychic takes it down, I got a critical hit there. And last up is Arcanine, I stick with Psychic. It hits me with the Fire Blast, but doesn't do too much damage, and we take down Blaine. Giovanni time, and just like the first two battles with him, he was super easy. This time it was a one shot sweep. Rhyhorn goes down with one Psychic, his Needle Queen and Needle King. Both go down to one Psychic, then this Ductrio, just because it has bad defenses, I went over to try attack and I don't think we even needed a critical hit, but hey, we got it anyways, I'm not complaining. And then this second Rhyhorn also went down to a Psychic. Just, you know, Giovanni doesn't seem to be a problem for me when I do these Kanto challenges, but I'm not complaining, man. All I know now is that we're heading to the Elite Four. Before I can head to Victory Road, though, as you guys know, I have to take out my rival for the second to last time. But well, he was a near one-shot sweep this time, unlike the last battle. First up, his Pidgeot goes down with one Shockwave, his Rival goes down with one Psychic. And this time around, his Execute didn't give me any problems, but I realized last time, his Execute gave me problems because I was burned and tri attack is a physical type move in this game, because normal types are a physical move in this game, because it was before the physical special split. But anyways, Alakazam and Garros both go down in one hit. His Charizard is able to take a Shockwave and then hit me with a surprisingly hard flamethrower. Did about a third of my health before taking him down, and that makes me a little worried. First up is Lorelei, and for this battle, I sort of just switched around what moves I used because even though Shockwave was super effective on most of her Pokemon, Psychic and Tri Attack were doing a bit more damage. First up was her Dugong, and it just sets up a hail before I take it down with another Shockwave, but that hail would end up becoming pretty annoying. Next up is her Cloister and surprisingly goes down with one Psychic pretty easily, I was lucky about that. Then it's her Slowbro and I go over to Shockwave because it is part Psychic type. But because of the Hail in it using Surf, I'm almost down to half health already and she also heals it up. But I take it right back down to one health with another Shockwave and then I take it down on the next turn. So then out comes her Lapras and this thing I was thinking it was going to be pretty tough. I use a tri attack I get below health, but because of the Citrus Berry, it's able to take another hit, and then she fully heals it. Great. I'm down to 76 health before I take it down with another tri attack and then luckily her last Pokemon is only a Jinx. It can't take a physical hit to save its life, and it goes down in one hit. Bruno, on the other hand, was a clean one-shot sweep of Psychic. None of his Pokemon can really take a hit, and yeah, it's the easiest battle in the Elite Four, including the champion by far. And I just sort of find it funny that, you know, Lorelei was ch more challenging, I guess, than Bruno, and I know it's because I have a super effective move against most of Bruno's Pokemon, but even though I'm level 86, I mean, just the first Elite Four member was challenging. Luckily, Bruno, like I said, pretty easy. He goes down, and I'm moving on to Agatha. For the most part, Agatha was a pretty easy battle besides her best Pokemon, which was her second Gengar. But her first Gengar went down to one Psychic, and knowing that its Ghost Side moves couldn't really touch me, I was feeling pretty confident. Then next up was her Golbat, and I killed it with Shockwave just to save some PP on Psychic because I was running a bit low. And then next up was her Arbok, and it used Intimidate, so I knew I was not using Tri Attack, that's for sure, as it goes down with the Psychic, and I get up to level 87. However, her second Gengar, like I said, put me to sleep, and then. I could not wake up, I was like, man, come on, subscribe, wake up. He got me below half health before I woke up and took him down with the psychic. Man, I was just a bit nervous, I thought I was about to go to sleep forever. Last up though is Haunter, I take it off one psychic, defeating her. On my first attempt at Lance, I came so close. 
basically here's how it went. First it was a Gyarados and it has Intimidate, so I knew I would not be using tri attack throughout this battle. But just like my rival's Gyarados, I take it down with one Shockwave. Next up was his Aerodactyl, and I got it to very low health with the Shockwave as he hit a weak wing attack, but he healed it up, and then out of nowhere came out with a Hyper Beam, which deal with some pretty good damage. But I ended up taking it out, and the next up was his Dragonite, and this thing could take my Psychics pretty well. I mean, I wasn't even doing half of his health. It hit me with a critical outrage, though. Luckily, his Citrus Bear got it out of full restore range, so that was actually nice. But his Dragonair doesn't even go down to one Psychic. I'm down to 32 HP. I'm in the red. And his final Dragonair is able to finish me off. I came so close, but I was just so far away. It wasn't until my third attempt that I realized I had Blizzard. So I got rid of Shockwave and Top Porygon that. And that made this battle a lot easier. And you might think it made taking down his Gyarados a lot harder. But actually, I got a critical Blizzard. So look at me. And then after that, his Aerodactyl went down with two Psychics. It still got a Wing Attack and Hyper Beam off because it outsped me, so that was sort of annoying. But after that, it was just a one-shot sweep. His Dragonite was four times weak to Blizzard, so it went down with one shot. And this time around, his Dragonairs were no problem. Luckily, I didn't miss any Blizzards throughout this battle because that could have completely turned things around. But yeah, I can't believe I didn't realize I had Blizzard. I don't know. I don't know how I didn't see that, but whatever. All that matters is that we have one battle left. Champion time, and this battle I was pretty nervous going into because of how the Elite Four has gone so far, especially Lance. But anyways, first up was his Pidgeot. That thing was no problem, and like always, we trace his Kenai ability, which is nice, and it goes down with a Crit Blizzard. Next up is his Alakazam, which sets up a Reflect, so it's actually able to take a Tri Attack and hit a Psychic, which I think ended up playing a big part in this battle actually. Then his Executor came out, it went down with one Blizzard, three down, three to go. His Rhydon was out, that also went down with one Blizzard, as we got up to level 88 in the process. But then once we got to his Gyarados, that's when things just got out of hand. And basically, it gets the Intimidate off, I go over to Psychic, but I can't two-shot it, and it starts using Dragon Rage. I get it down to red health, but that means he's going to be full restore. I noticed that the Reflect wore off, but... My idiot self also forgot that he has Intimidate, so tri attack wasn't going to do as much damage as Psychic, but I finished it off with 71 health remaining, but Charizard, I mean, just too much, he destroys me with one Fire Blast, and man, just what a way to lose. On my fifth try, I got a run where I got to his Gyarados with full health after using Recover, and then I just started to spam Psychic. He ended up using two full restores while on his Gyarados, and I was like, bro, what are you doing, Gary? But it was fine because after he used that second full restore, I got a special defense drop. But he used recover just to play it safe. And yeah, that made him go down pretty easily, especially because he missed a hydro pump as well. So I got pretty lucky on that. And then last up was his Charizard, and Blizzard did more damage than I expected to. He hit me with a very strong fire blast, though. I used recover just to play it safe, but for some reason he switched to slash. And then on my last PP for Blizzard, I finally took him down, becoming the champions of the Kanto region. And I don't know why I didn't teach Porygon Blizzard earlier on in the game, but hey, it doesn't matter because we are the champions with a single Porygon. So it is indeed possible to beat Pokemon Fire Red with only one Porygon. And I'm not sure what my next challenge is going to be, but I will definitely figure that out soon. If you guys enjoyed, smash that like button, subscribe to see more. And for now, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.